Hey guys, today we are going to take a look at every single Mythic and determine if it's a good price or if it's not a good price. Now the pre-order prices I'm taking this from is Star City Games, mainly because that is the highest they will ever be. So these prices, 95% of these prices will plummet. And I want to share which cards I think have potential and which cards are really just going to get hit hard. Ajani. Uh, this Ajani looks good, but I think he's not going to play well. He does have a home already, which is the Knight deck, the History of Banalia decks. Uh, very good in tokens. But $18 seems like a lot, and $40 as a foil. Typically speaking, never buy a foil Planeswalker when it is released. That is the absolute height of the card. There are very few exceptions. I don't think a Johnny is one of those. The other two cards I want to mention are the Apex of Power and Bone Dragon. These are two of the cheapest mythics in the set, pre-order at least. And they are the ones that you want to avoid in your box at all costs. The Dragon... The Elder Dragons are have a premium in foil because of EDH. They are tricolor, which is very beneficial for many EDH decks because you can add you know, free colors as better than two, in my opinion. And the foils are going to be highly desired. However, I don't think it's going to be 25 bucks, especially for this particular dragon. Now, there are some dragons that I think can get up there, but not this one. So again, foil planeswalkers, the majority of them tank in price. I think a Johnny. So what is the maximal amount of money for a planeswalker? It would actually be Khan Scion of Urza, around 50 bucks. We have seen Liliana of the Veil, vale, which is a totally different time at $50, and Jace Vin's Prodigy, actually at $80, $90. But these are not that. So a Johnny is none of those. I think he's going to drop to 10 and the foil is going to be relatively cheap to pick up. Actually, surprisingly, you'd be surprised if you go back to core sets and look up the foil planeswalkers. They're a lot cheaper than I, a lot of time has passed, but they are still relatively cheap. Now let's talk about Chromium. This one is an interesting commander. Is his foil really $30? Probably not. I think the premium is a little too much. Actually, the premium here is not too bad. It's a two to one. However, it's just not. It's not. You can get so much more for $30. Now, Crucible at $40. When a card is reprinted in a core set, it does something very strange. Core sets are not opened as much as Amaket or Kaladaz or any of this. It's during summer summertime. People typically do not want to draft Corset, and the player base is much smaller around now. People are on family vacations, they have less uh, disposable income, they have, you know, money, they have to spend money on travel. Crucible is one of those cards that like, if it gets down to 20, you want to buy in. A Chromar Memorial, Orgbog, these are guarantees. And Urgbog was under 10 at one time, and it's such a guarantee when you look at the card. So so was the Chromos Memorial. I think it was like $6 at the time. So definitely Crucible is one to keep your eyes on. $40, it is not. The foil at 70 mm, I think it's going to plummet a little bit more, but definitely a great pickup and something that you should keep your eyes on. Liliana, Untouched by Death. I like it, but is it that good? No. Core set planeswalkers do very, very poorly. And there is a history of poor performance by these planeswalkers. And on paper, they all seem very good. And standard, they're all very good. But the modern playability, there's so many planeswalkers playable in modern that unless you're JSD Mind Sculptor, who's not even being played right now, or Liliana the Veil, Liliana of the Last Hope, you gotta cost three or less. That's why Jace, one of his strongest cards, costs four. So, hmm. 
Next, we have Nico Bolez. Uh, definitely the foil is 80 bucks. No way, it's just 80. I remember our devastation. People were really excited about that Nico Bolez planeswalker, and today it's I think it's under 10 bucks. I think the foil is around 25. You definitely want if you pulled any of these mythics in foil, get rid of it at the pre-release. That is the only time you can move it. Now, omniscient, I call it omniscience. Omniscience, I'm still gonna call it omniscience. The foil is actually 50 bucks versus the regular at 15, almost a three to one. Uh, interestingly enough, this card does see play in Legacy and Vintage. It's one of those cards that you play and you win the game. However, it will take a beating. The reason it takes a beating is only one of these reprinted mythics will hold its price above 20, and that's probably Crucible. Historically, when we look at a reprint like a Chromos Memorial, this reminds me a lot of Orgbog. Everyone knows it's good, but still going to plummet in price because it's a little niche. Next, we have Paldidium Moros, the Runer. I'm not impressed by this card. I, I just think that if you have any of these in foil, you need to get rid of it at the pre-release. We have Respendent Angel. Now, Angels could be a deck, but $25 is a lot. One of the biggest issues with pre-order is the price is already assuming that this is a, one of the... It's already assuming all these cards are the top 5%, that 95% of the prices will go down and 5% will hold even or even go up in price. And typically, there's one or two cards that will triple in price. And they're really hard to determine. I don't think it's one of them. Uh, I like the Angel, and I will be picking a card later this week when I see some more of the trends. And it might be a pick, but it's got to go down some because $25, like, you are hoping, what, this goes up to 35 at that point, you're break even still. Even if it goes up to 40, you're probably break even. Now, Sarkon is one that people are very excited about. He is a free mana planeswalker, which is definitely a bonus. I just don't see him as that good. Out of these planeswalkers that we're going to talk about, yikes. Uh, yikes, because you need to be something truly special. And you need to see some modern playability. Uh, Jace Finn's Prodigy, everyone thought he would be played in modern. He was not. Or I guess people are tempted. It didn't work out. It could be that I'm underestimating Sarkon, but I don't really think so. Okay, next is Scapeshift. This card is definitely not 25 bucks. So you have Scapeshift, Crucible, and Omniscience. Two of these cards are going to get hit really hard. The other card will be hit, but like, stabilize. Tezzeret. So this is the most expensive Planeswalker in the set. He costs five. He will see no modern playability because Jace costs four, and Jace, the Mind Sculptor, is far superior in my opinion. So the question is, can he dominate standard? At $30, you have to dominate standard. The answer, in my opinion, is no. Um, I am making this assessment based on what I know. Control decks, are they have plenty of stuff at five or more. I don't know this is what you want to do. Five is a lot. Next, we have Vicarious as Maudi the Dire. One of those EDH dragons, like I know that when we talk about EDH dragons, the foils are very lucrative and they can kind of get expensive. You will be able to buy these in cheaper. So I'm not saying that they don't have any value. I'm just saying that the low point is rotation. These things will be around, you can get them by the handful, just like the Karns of Tarkir dragons. Oh, sorry. Dragons of Tarkir. Dragons. Very powerful dragons. Very good. And they were very cheap after rotation. And lastly, Vivian Reed. It costs five. I mean, you do have Land of War Elves in the set, so it helps it a tiny bit. But I don't see any of these Planeswalkers making a splash, and I included Nicol Bolas in that as well. 
If I had to pick one card, Mythic, it would be the Angel. But the Angel has to go down in price. 25 is just no. It's too high. If it was like 1250, yeah, I would say okay, 1250 to 25, that's reasonable. But the card is starting off at 25. Now again, this is Star City Games, but I do expect the prices to go down at closer to pre-release. The card should be going down. Now that pre-release is a little different. You can get your boxes at pre-release now. Anyway, that is it. Uh, let me know what your favorite speculation is. Uh, we might do some fun little contest and just pick winners and stuff. Anyway, bye guys.